Hey guys, the good, the bad and the buggy here, taking a quick look at playing the commander and squad leader roles in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. First off, the squad leader role for both sides is really important. These are the guys that should be keeping their squad focused on attacking one point together and passing on information such as enemy positions and how you want your squad to proceed, because working together is much better than a bunch of lone wolves. Squad leaders should also be marking enemy positions with binoculars for their team commander, but more on that all later. So I think it goes without saying, that someone who has a little bit of experience both with shooting and the map is suited to this role. Both sides squad leader plays slightly differently, so we'll start by looking at the US squad leader first. The thing most squad members will want in their leader is someone who stays alive close to the fight, since other members of the squad can spawn directly onto their leader's position. This means that squad leaders shouldn't be the first man when going forward, because if they die then everyone has to make the long run back to the fight. This makes the role slightly more suited to someone who's more patient and methodical, but if the leader can get into a cap zone, then having entire squad spawn right into the fight can quickly turn the tide of a battle. Additionally, on maps that the US have helicopters, dropping off squad leaders behind enemy lines will allow the US to attack from different angles, similar to the Vietnamese tunnels. Also, the squad leader can attach transport pilots to their squad, making it another mobile spawn point. One thing to always consider though, is is it safe for my squad mates to be spawning on me, or will they be spawning directly into enemy fire? Not only is that frustrating for your squad, but can also lose you a lot of tickets, so you find a relatively safe spot to hold up in. I feel like squad leaders are best taking the private loadout. That way they have a good solid weapon being able to hold the own at range as well as up close. They won't be encumbered by heavier weapons, which will slow them down, allowing that role to be given to someone who can have a more carefree and aggressive approach. US squad leaders are also given binoculars and M18 smokes. Both of these are used to mark artillery targets for their team commanders to call in off-map support, either airstrike or artillery. To mark a target with a smoke, simply equip it and throw it. This is good for marking things a short distance away, or if you are pinned down and can't use your binoculars, throw one of these to give your commander an option to fire danger close. This smoke can also be used as a very narrow smoke grenade, blocking a bit of vision but nowhere near as effective as a point man smoke. Also throwing the smoke grenade will change your current mark for your commander. Using the binoculars to mark is easy, just equip them, right click, aim at the point you want to mark and then left click. Alternatively, you can hold down the left click to give you a more precise aim and release when the mark is where you want it to be. If you're trying to mark a location and the game isn't registering it, or is it saying that you're making a valley point, press X while aiming and then try again. This will cycle between a squad move order and a target mark. Also, you can mark a location by using the quick command wheel. This is bound to the H key by default. Aim at the place you want to mark, hold down H to bring up the wheel, and then mark the target by left clicking on mark target. The Vietnamese squad leaders can play more aggressively than their US counterparts. Because instead of having the squad spawn on them, their squad spawns at tunnels, this allows the leaders to push with the rest of their team, spawning like any other soldier. Tunnels can be placed on soil, and have to be a certain distance away from an objective, and can't be in what's classed as enemy controlled territory. You'll get a warning on your screen if you are there. So, to dig a tunnel, equip your mattock and look at the ground and hold left click until it's dug. Good places to build tunnels are against cover with the hatch pushed up against the cover to hide it as best as you can. Tunnels should always be dug, and it's probably best for you to dig your first one just behind the first objective you are defending, and then go and look for a better spot, because if you die, you already have a spawn closer. Tunnels are best placed on the flanks and locations where the other team won't be expecting you, but keep in mind that if someone gets close to the tunnel, they can destroy it and stop you spawning. Also, you don't want your tunnels to get spawn camps by the enemy, making your squad a farm for them. Additionally, a few traps can be placed around the tunnel. This should get your team a few kills, since once the tunnel is discovered, the enemy team will usually make a point of destroying it. Artillery can also destroy tunnels, so often once behind an objective will be destroyed this way. When marking targets, there are a few things to keep in mind. Often, good marks are a bit in front of or behind an objective, allowing your commanders to bring fire onto enemy positions while reducing the chance of it hitting friendlies. Mark locations that the enemy will use as a rally point before launching an attack, preferably in open ground with no buildings to hide in to maximise casualties. Mark locations that will deny an enemy a path to the objective, buying your team more time to get into position, or simply on top of an objective to clear it out as much as possible, or to force the defenders to take cover while you advance. When a recon is called up by your commander, check your map to see the biggest concentration of enemy forces and adjust your mark accordingly, to give your commander the option of calling artillery on them. Also keep listening out to what the commander is asking for, for they will be constantly looking at the map and can see what the other squad leaders have marked. This leads us into the commander's role, which is really important. This is the player who needs to make the team work together, 
calling out where needs reinforcing, where the enemy is pushing, either flanking or building up before a push, enemy tunnels or squads, timings and cooldowns left on commander support abilities, where squad leaders should place marks in preparation for off-map support, where to push as a coordinated effort, and most importantly calling where and when fire support is going to arrive so your teammates can move away or hold off from attacking. Also, tell your team when it's close to ending so they can be prepared to make a move. To do all these things, a commander really should have a mic. This will make your life a lot easier and your teammates as they can just listen to what you're saying without having to read in the middle of a firefight, but it's not necessary, you can get by with just typing. So, both the Vietnamese commander and the US commander get different abilities to call in. To call in support, go to any radio station or radio man and press F. To help find the nearest radio, call up the tactical view, default is T, which will highlight any available radios in yellow and show their distance from you. Let's look at the US abilities first. Rapid deployment, this will instantly spawn all their teammates at their chosen spawn location. This is usually best used after the enemy artillery. Aerial recon brings a recon plane to circle the battle spotting enemies who are outside and moving. The Vietnamese can hide from this by lying down or crouching and not moving. This can also be shot down really easily by small arms fire or any fixed machine gun will destroy this in a few seconds. Request spooky. This calls in a plane to shred a location with its miniguns. It will hit both allies and enemies but can easily be countered by the enemy commander's anti-air ability. This is really good for putting behind a location as it will deny access to it for quite a long time. Request artillery literally calls in artillery spot, which is really good for stopping reinforcements, getting to a site and clearing them out. This can also be called off between salvos using the cancel artillery ability, but rounds that have already been fired will still land on the target. Request napalm will drop napalm on the target, which will kill everyone instantly. It will also kill anyone who goes into the area a short time afterwards. This can be countered with anti-air, but it's so fast it should be able to drop its bomb before the enemy commander can activate their anti-air ability. But if the anti-air ability is already active, then it will probably be able to shoot it down before the bombs are dropped. The artillery and air supports are really good for softening up a site before an assault goes in, as well as being dropped behind the capture zone as an assault is happening to take out any defenders sitting behind the site, as well as denying reinforcements arriving. The spooky is especially good at this role, just make sure to tell your team when and where you are dropping support to give them time to move away or get into the position before an attack goes in. The Vietnamese abilities are less about inflicting damage, but more about getting troops back into the fight and countering the US air power. Ambush deployment, this will instantly spawn all dead teammates on the commander's position. This is a great ability to use, but you should choose when to use it, as more often than not squad leaders will have dug tunnels closer to the fight than you will be. But if you are in a cap zone that is being contested, this will change the course of a fight. Also having a radio man and a commander make an assault or flank, and then using this ability has the power to spawn up to 30 players in an unexpected location. Scout recon is similar to the US plane, but unable to be shot down. For both the US and the Vietnamese, using their recon ability before calling in artillery support is usually a good idea. This will let you and the squad leaders adjust marks and then you can pick the best one to call fire support in on. Ho Chi Minh Trail This ability reduces the cost of tickets by half and the time between each deployment for 30 seconds. This ability has a long cooldown, but is one of those abilities that in a public game should be used all the time. Request artillery is just like the US version, but as the defenders a lot of the time, and with many of the cap zones having tunnels underneath them, you can drop this directly onto the site. If you see that it's going to be overrun, tell your team to get underground and then call this strike in. Safe in the knowledge that with your guys underground, they should be safe from all artillery. Request anti-air is the only counter to a spooky or napalm strike. For it to stop a napalm strike, you have to have it already requested before the strike comes in as there is a long delay between you hearing the strike coming and the missile being readied, so intuition or counting 6 minutes since their last strike is the only way to have it readied in time. For me, I don't try and stop napalm, I use it to counter spookies instead, as they can deny an area for your team for a long period of time. A spooky is easy to kill, as you can hear them coming and have your missile fired just as their first shots ring out, saving your teammates lives and time. Your missile will be ready to fire again by the time the next spooky can be called. Anti-air can also be used to take down helicopters, but should they be flying under 75 meters, which most good pilots will be doing, they can easily avoid this. So the Vietnamese commander has some point playing a little bit more aggressively than the US counterpart, but this is a bit of a risky move, since if you die right when your team needs anti-air, you're leaving them really vulnerable. Besides, the commander can get a huge amount of kills from just support fire, so standing at the back, safe from the fight, organising the team, is probably a better use of your time, as you can see how the fight is evolving and make calls using your map which is what both sides commanders should be doing alongside managing their cooldowns and picking the right ability for the right moment. 
You shouldn't just use something because it's off cooldown. So in summary, it's all about communication at this level. Squad leaders and the commander need to be talking to the rest of their teammates, telling them what support abilities are available, where they need marks, and squad leaders asking the commander if the marks are in the right place, and telling their squad how they're going to take the rest of the fight. I hope this quick look at the leader roles was helpful to some of you. Let me know what you think in the comments, and good luck in the field.